Hey brothers and sisters and anybody else who's watching this video, um, the Lord uh, revealed something to me and they're talking about um, the, uh, you know, that you guys, the, the new Jerusalem isn't going to come here until after the, um, till after the thousand year uh, reign. And so, and we're going to read these scriptures, but, um, first of all, you guys, to, in order to prepare for the blessing from the Lord, you have to follow the Ten Commandments, and it will, and, and you have to become holy. It will make your temple, um, be able to accept, um, the, the power, the fire, the Holy Spirit, because the... You, the the that power of the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit will not share the same space in your vessel unless you're practicing these things. It's not good enough to just say that, oh, I'm a good person and I believe in Jesus Christ. You know, it's there's more to it than than that. That's that's a good start though. That's a really good start. But um so there's still like there's gonna be a new a temple actually built in our millennial um, kingdom, and there will still be, um, animal, uh, sacrifice, but there's still, um, uh, communion, which is the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that's why I was telling you guys, you can't, um, Jesus, uh, Jesus says, I, you know, when you eat this bread, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, um, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, I will be in him and he will be in me. And you guys, that, that, and, and whoever does that, I will raise him up on the last day. So you guys, you have, you, you, you have to, to do these things, you know, to, to be able to accept that gift. Um, but um, there will still be animal sacrifice, but we're still going to do regular communion. And you guys, once this reign is established, see, we, we, we are going to, um, together, as, as family in Christ, we're going to pave a way as we're giving glory. We're still going to have children and be married, and we're going to give glory to God, and we, we're going to pave a way of glory for Him, for God to be able to come down with the new Jerusalem, and, and so that God can dwell with us. Because during the millennial reign, it's going to be kings and priests and judges. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to be, the new Jerusalem's not going to come till after the thousand years. So there's still going to be um, other things going, there's still going to be death and, you know, stuff like that. So we're going to have still the offer, we're still going to have, um, the Holocaust. Um, it says he is in Ezekiel, it says he is provided, he is to provide the prince who's going to be like the, the king of the world, pretty much. Um, he's not the king of kings and Lord of lords. He's just an anointed one. He is to provide the sacrifice for sin, the prince, oblation, holocaust, and communion sacrifices, atoning for the house of Israel. And this is talking about in the millennial reign. And if you read this, it's Ezekiel 40, 43, 44, 45, and 46. It talks about this. There's going to be a temple. And you guys, we're going to like get together on every Sabbath, and we're going to give glory to God, and we're going to raise children to give glory to God, and it's going to be, it's going to be beautiful, but you guys, if you don't follow the Ten Commandments, and, um, you know, if you don't practice the Sabbath, um, you still got a long way to go, you know, and, and I hope, and I hope that you, you know, that you take these things to heart, you know, but you got to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and then doing communion too, that's, you guys, that brings you many spiritual gifts and fruits, and, and you'll be able to understand, and you'll be able to be more intimate with, with Abba, and that's really, that, it's an amazing thing, you guys, it's not just good enough to, to just want to be fair, 
and and to be a good person it, it goes you got to it's it's we are going to be a holy people in in the millennial reign you know and it's still not going to be perfect you guys because the goal of this whole thing is for god to come down and dwell with us see we're going to have a king but you trust me you guys it's way better when god will be dwelling with us in the new jerusalem now um so um yeah, the reign of Christ for a thousand years is Revelation 20, right? And, um, and so, okay, and then, and that's in Revelation 20, the reign of Christ for a thousand years. And, um, then there's the, or the, in chapter 20, there's the thousand year reign, but then halfway in chapter 20, there's the second battle the end where Satan comes out again. Even after that new millennial reign, Satan's going to come back out again because people are still going to be sinning, you know. I know this is a hard thing to swallow, you guys, but this is the truth. And uh, he's going to come out again, but God's going to devour him with the fire. And... Um, but let's read this, you guys. This is where this is where it's it's really it's it's amazing. Then I saw new heaven and new earth. So this earth isn't gonna pass away. Satan's reign and this world of this Satan world is gonna be gone, but we're still gonna be here on this earth. So and because that new Jerusalem is still gonna be being built, right? And we have to pave a way of glory in this world for God to come down and dwell with us. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This is chapter 21, Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. New earth. The first heaven and the first earth has disappeared now and there was no longer any sea. The reason there's that sea is because that's what's going to hold the abyss. That's where Satan is going to be. Um, that's the pressure of that water is going to keep him down there for a thousand years. I saw the holy city and the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven as a be beautiful as a bride, all dressed for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice call from the throne. You see the city? Here God lives among them. He will make his home among them. They shall be his people and he will be their God. His name is God with them. He will wipe away all, all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more mourning or sadness. The world of the past has gone. Then the one sitting on the throne spoke. Now I am making the whole of creation new, he said. Write this that what I am saying is sure and will come true. And then he said, it is already done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give water from the well of life free to anybody who is thirsty. It is the rightful inheritance of the one who provides victory, one who proves victorious. And I will be his God and he a son to me. But the legacy for cowards, for those who break their word or worship obscenities, for murderers and fornicators and for fortune tellers, idolaters and any other sort of liars, is the second death in the burning lake of sulfur. You don't want to be there, guys. Trust me. You know, be holy. Live a holy life. You know, practice the commandment. The commandments are, are everlasting. One of the seven angels that had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came to me and said, Come here, and I will show you the bride that the Lamb has married. See, now the Lamb is that. That's when the, the wedding is going to be. In the, in the spirit, he took me to the top of of an enormous high mountain and showed me Jerusalem, the holy city coming down from God out of heaven. It had all the radiant glory of God and glittered like some precious jewel, like precious jewel of crystal clear diamond. The walls of it were of a great height and had 12 gates. At each of the twelve gates there was an angel. Over the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. 
on the east there were three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. The city wall stood on twelve foundation stones, each one of which bore the name of one of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel that was speaking to me was carrying a gold measuring rod to measure the city and its gates. The plan of the city is perfectly square, its length the same as its breadth. So it's going to be squared perfectly, right? He measured the city with his rod, and it was 12,000 furlongs in length and in breadth and equal in height. See, like on Fortnite, there's a dark box, and it's completely square. It's Satan trying to mimic. Satan's always trying to mimic God. He's always trying to mimic it and invert truth and goodness. He measured the wall, and this was 144 cubits high. The angel was using the ordinary cubit. The wall was built of diamond and the city of pure gold, like polished glass the foundations of the city were faced with all kinds of precious stone the first with diamond the second lapis lazuli the third turquoise the fourth crystal the fifth gate the the, the fifth agate the sixth ruby the seventh gold quartz the eighth ma malachite the ninth topaz the tenth emerald the eleventh sapphire the twelfth amethyst the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate being made of a single pearl. And the main street of the city was pure gold, transparent as glass. I saw that there was no temple in the city, since the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb were themselves the temple. And the city did not need sun or the moon for light, since it was lit by the radiant glory of God, and the Lamb was a lit torch for it. The pagan nations will live by its light. See, you guys, we, we were like pagans and heathens, you know? That's why the, the, because we accept, you know, we were foreigners. We weren't originally Jewish. That's who God originally had this plan for, but they didn't want it. They were, they didn't, they did silly things. Um, and the kings of the earth will bring their treasures. The gates of it will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. And the, the nation, and the nations will come bringing their treasure and their wealth. Excuse me. Nothing unclean may come into it. No one who does what is loathsome or false, but only those who are listed in the Lamb's Book of Life. And uh, so I'm going to read 22 tomorrow. But yeah, you guys, I just wanted to restore the Holy Spirit in me, wanted to restore that truth, is that we're still going to do the, the the Eucharist or communion. We're still going to have the Sabbath and we're going to pave as a as a family in Christ with the, with the with the um the prince or the king, you know, that God anoints. There um there he's going to be the one to be the priest, you know, to give the to do the sacrifices, but we're still going to have communion. And meaning the Last Supper, taking the bread and blood, because that's that's what covers the sins. There's still going to be sins going on, you know, unfortunately. So we just got to get through the thousand years, and then the new Jerusalem will come down. But we're still going to have children, and we're going to pave a way. Um, you know, the Holy Spirit in us will help pave a way of glory for God to come down. You know, because God has to have a holy, we have to pave a holy way and place for him because he's so amazing and magnificent, you guys. So, um, I just wanted to restore the Holy Spirit inside of me, wanted to restore that truth that we're still going to do the Sabbath, you know, and, and give glory to God. So, I love you guys. God bless.